Welcome to the first lesson in Conic Sections, Chapter 7.3, Circles. The first thing I want you to do is hit the pause button and copy down the equation of a circle. It goes as follows. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. A couple things you guys need to know is that the center of any circle is always opposite of h, opposite of k. Now this time, it's opposite of both because remember, like when we were doing an absolute value, when things are happening inside grouping symbols and then an exponent is being tagged onto them or some kind of grouping symbol in the middle of a graph, it's always opposite your intuition. So it's always opposite of h, opposite of k. And we'll see what this looks like as we graph a couple of circles. You need to memorize this formula. All right, and you need to be able to recognize it as a circle right off the bat. So why don't we go ahead and graph a couple of circles here. We'll just do a couple of examples on how to graph a circle. I'm going to give an example, example one. If I say x plus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 16. A couple things we got to know is that the center is at negative 3, positive 1, right? Opposite your intuition. Now, the other thing that I forgot to mention a few seconds ago is to find the radius of the circle. Well, r is the radius. And so we'll say that the radius is equal to r. Now, bear in mind that the radius is being squared. So the radius here, in fact, is not 16, because 16 is r squared. The radius, in this case, is actually the square root of 16, which is 4. And from here, we just graph this thing. It's pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and just draw this thing out for you. Okay, my center's at negative 3, comma 1, and my radius tells me to go out 4. So I'm going to go out 1, 2, 3, 4 in, to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4 up, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4 down below. And as best you can, you just kind of connect the dots. And mine's not very pretty, but I don't really care. Let's try another one. x plus 2 quantity squared plus y plus 4 quantity squared equals 9. So the center of this thing is going to be negative 2, negative 4, and the radius is going to be 3. So let's try this out now. How does this look? centers at negative 2, negative 4, and then my radius is 3, which means I go up 1, 2, 3, from the center out 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3. And from here, I just kind of connect them as best I can. Sometimes they might give you something easier, but because you're not used to it, it might look hard. x squared plus y squared equals... Well, because nothing is happening inside the parentheses, or there are no parentheses to speak of, we can assume that the center is at 0, 0. Because if you think about this as, say, x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 1. So here I'm centered at the origin. I go out 1, I go left 1, I go down 1, and I go to the right 1. And that's my circle. So that's how to draw a circle. That's when it's given to you in conic form. When it's in standard form, it's a little harder to see. And we're going to use a very familiar technique to bring it to, to, bring it to conic form. And I think you guys all know what that technique is. Whenever we're trying to convert a form from standard into some type of vertex type form, it always reverts back to completing the square. So why don't we take a look at writing equations of circles. And go ahead and write completing the
the square. You've got to use it. So let's take a look at something here. Why don't we take a look at this problem here? Number one, it goes as follows. Y, x squared plus y squared minus 6y minus 16 equals 0. OK. With circles, you have to do completing the square twice most of the time. This time we don't because we only have one linear y term. Right? This is my linear y term, negative 6y. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x squared plus y squared minus 6y, leave myself some space, I'm actually going to go and bracket these off, equals I'm going to move 16 over to this side. Now, in each side, I'm going to add the box. Now, remember, what goes inside the box is half the middle term. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. And now, because there's nothing out here for the 3 to interact with, I don't need to multiply by anything here. So what I end up with is x squared plus y minus 3 squared equals, this is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. This is my equation of a circle. And they might ask you to graph it, and that's OK. You've got to identify that the vertex is at 0, 3. And then we move out 5 times in each direction, because the radius is equal to 5. So we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For, back, for lack of a better picture, here is your circle. OK, let's do, let's do one where you end up having to complete the square twice in one problem. It's actually kind of cool. I like completing the square. I like it so much, I do it twice per problem sometimes. Let's take a look at number 2 here. x squared plus y squared minus 18x minus 18y plus 53 equals 0. OK, I'm going to go and subtract 53 from both sides. So I get equals negative 53 here. Now, I'm going to rearrange all of these. I'm going to say x squared minus 18x plus y squared minus 18y. Now I do that because I want all the x's together and I want all the y's together. So let's go ahead and do this again, leaving ourselves some space. I've got x squared minus 18x, leave yourself some space, plus y squared minus 18y, leave yourself some space again, equals negative 53. Now, I am going to add the box on both x's and y's, because I'm trying to create two perfect square trinomials. If I add two boxes to the left, I have to add <clears throat> two boxes to the left. Inside the box here is negative 9. Inside the box here is negative 9 again. So what I get is x minus 9 quantity squared plus y minus 9 quantity squared equals, this is 81. This is 81. This is 162. 162 minus 53 is 901. So that means that my radius is 109, or at least r squared is 109. So let's go and identify what we can. The center is at 9 comma 9, and the radius is the square root of 109, well, the square root of 109 is probably just a little over 10, so about 10.1 or 10.2. So let's graph this thing. I'm actually going to go scale by 2s, because we're not going to have enough space. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. My center's at 9, comma 9, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, a little bit below, or before. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 is towards here. I'm going to move out 10 in each direction. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 is about right here. Same thing this way. This way 
and two, four, six, eight, ten going this way. All right. Let's do one more completing the square with two of them, and then we'll move on. Then we'll move on to something really fun, more fun than watching Troll Two. Actually, that's not true. Okay, next one, number three. X squared minus 12X plus 84 equals negative Y squared plus 16Y. Okay, I'm going to move all of my Ys over to this side, and I'm going to move my 84 here. So what I'm going to get, and I'm also going to leave myself all the space in between. So what I get is X squared minus 12X. Actually, I'm not going to do that yet minus, I'm sorry, plus y squared minus 16y equals negative 84. Again, I just added y to both sides, I subtracted 16y to both sides, I subtracted 84 from both sides, and this is what I get. I'm ready to complete the square. I've got x squared minus 12x, leave yourself some space, plus y squared minus 16y, leave yourself a little more space, equals negative 84. I'm going to add the boxes, which means I have to do it on this side as well. Half of negative 12 is negative 6. Half of negative 16 is negative 8. I get x minus 6 quantity squared plus y plus 8 quantity squared equals, I have no idea what these are. This is negative 6, negative 8, so this is 36, 64. Together they form 100. 100 minus 84 is 16. So my center is at 6, negative 8. My radius is 4. Let's going to graph this thing. Okay, our center is at, negative, at 6, negative 8. Now I'm going to scale these by 2. So 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6, 8. My radius is 4, so 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, and 2, 4. All right? Okay, let's move on to the next section here. Okay, the next type of problem we're going to deal with says write the equation of the circle that has a center at 8, comma negative 9 and pass it through 21, 22. All right, so why don't we go and just draw a diagram of this real quick. Remember, they're, they're first not asking us to do that. They don't want us to move the screen. They want us to start at 8, comma, negative 9. And that is just, let's just draw 8, negative 9. So let's see, 8, negative 9 down there. And they want to pass through 21, which is over here, way over here, up 22, let's say over here. They want us to find the equation of the circle that does this. It has a center here, and it passes through here. This is up 22, and this is to the right, 21. A okay, big circle. Well, remember, whoa. Well, remember, last lesson we learned this cool thing called the distance formula. And that was defined as d equals radical x sub 1 minus x sub 2 quantity squared plus y sub 1 minus y sub 2 quantity squared. Well, we have to use that formula again in order to figure out what the radius is of this circle. Because the distance between these two is the radius of the circle. So we need to find the radius by using the distance formula. So let me go and jot down these coordinates again. The center's at 8, comma, negative 9. This random point here is 21, 22. So let's do the distance formula. That's how we're going to find out the radius of this circle. So d equals, or actually I should even say r equals right, because we're trying to find the radius, r equals 8 minus 21 quantity squared plus negative 9 minus 22 quantity squared. So negative 8 minus 21 is 13. And let's not forget that's being squared. Plus negative 29 minus 22 more, that's a big number, negative 31 quantity squared. Now this is going to be a pretty big number. This is 169 plus 
That 31 squared is 961. And if I combine that together, I end up with a radius of the square root of 1130. So how does that help us? Well, we know that the radius of the circle is rad 1130, which means that the r squared is going to be 1130, right? Because I just square both sides. That goes away. My center is at 8, negative 9. So it's going to be x something squared plus y something squared. Well, remember, inside the parentheses, the parentheses is always opposite your intuition. So if it was positive on the outside, it's going to be x minus 8. If it was negative on the outside, it's going to be y plus 9 quantity squared. And here's what you get. Good problem. Okay, I think that about does it for this uh, lesson. We'll see ya. Okay, let's do another example of this. We're going to write the equation of a circle that has a center at 4, 3 and passes the origin. Remember, if it passes the origin, it's going to pass 0, 0. So I need to find my radius, which is using the distance formula. So that would be 4 minus 0 quantity squared plus 3 minus 0 quantity squared. Well, what I've got here is I've got 4 squared, which is 16, plus 3 squared is 9, the square root of that. So I get the square root of 25, which is 5. My radius is 5. So now my center is at 4, negative, uh, 4, 3. So remember, it's always opposite your intuition. It's going to be x minus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 5. And you're done. Okay, I think it's time to end up this lesson. We'll see you next time.